Hi my dear friends, in this video I am going to explain about all the 5 programs using C++ language. First program is area of the square inscribed inside the circle. Here is a diagram for that, a square has been inscribed inside the circle. See here is a condition, diameter of the circle is equal to diagonal of the square. Using that condition, we are having the formula D is equal to root 2 into A. No? Using Pythagoras theorem, we are having d is equal to root 2 into a. We are having a here. In order to find out the square, area of the square, we need a, right? Area of the square is equal to a square. So, we are in need of a. You can take up this root 2 into this side, okay? So, if you are taking that up, you will have a is equal to d by root 2, okay? Then, you can calculate area of square a into a. You will have d square by 2, you know? Diameter is equal to 2 or substitute that final answer will be 2 into R square. We are just going to program it using C++ language. You can see here, this is the program for area of the square inscribed inside, inside the circle. Okay. Using this line, we are just going to import iostream.h. Right. Using this line, we are just going to differentiate the similar function. You know, in a compiler, all the user will access it. Right, so they will give a similar. There might be a chance of similar functions inside the compiler. In order to differentiate that, we are using namespace standard. Right, only after seeing this main function, your execution will start. Using cn, we are just scanning the input. Here, the input is seven. Right, after that, we are checking r is greater than zero. Radius is greater than zero. If it is so, it will call the area of square function. Now, call will move on to here. Right with the radius value right inside the function we are just going to calculate 2 into r into r okay so 2 into r into r is nothing but 2 into 7 into 7 clear it is 98 now it will return the value 98 and it will be printed here okay if if the condition becomes false it will execute the else condition it will print enter the positive value so this is your first program Second program is checking whether the square root of a first number is equal to cube root of a second number. For that, we are using square root and cube root function. See, this is the program which has been executed successfully by one of our viewer and she got 80 marks. Right? See, if you are not uh, able to use uh, the program exactly without inbuilt function, don't worry about it. Right? If you are able to execute all the five, four programs, it is enough for passing. Okay? Right? See, only after seeing the main function, your execution will start. Here we are declaring four variables. So, in the first two variables, we will get the inputs. In n, your first number will be stored. In i, your second number will be stored. Here I am giving 16 and 64 as a input. So, 16 is the first number and 64 is the second number. After getting the input, in a x, using a x, we are just going to calculate square root of n. Square root of 16 here, right? So, square root of 16 is 4 and y is equal to cube root of 64. You know, cube root of 64 is also 4, right? Then, using the if condition, we are just going to check x is equal to z equal to y. Now, the value will be 4 is equal to z equal to 4. It will print 1. Here, we are getting the output 1, right? Else, if the condition becomes false, it will print 0. This is your second program, okay? And third program is multiplication of a given number of given length, right? One day after seeing the main function, your execution will start. Here is the variable declaration. We are getting two values. One is the number of multiples, right? C and L is for getting the length. I am here giving 7 and 10, right? So, it is printing seventh, the multiples of 7 up until 10, okay? Up to 70 it is printing. So, how it is printing in the sense using the for loop. See, for i is equal to 1, it will print 7 into i. Uh, that is 7 into 1. So, 7 will be printed. Till 10, it will execute the loop and it will print the multiplication table. So, for this program also, she got 100, 100 marks. See, there in the question, it has been clearly mentioned that using use the function. But if you use this coding, you will get a 100 mark. I am having the proof for that. Right? And then... Fourth program is string swapping, right? You can see two variables has been declared, string 1 and string 2, 
right i am just getting those two input you can see nelson mandela are two strings right after that string copy of temp comma string one see i am going to execute it for you initially string copy in a first string copy statement we are just going to copy string one to temporary variable now in a temporary variable you will have first string first string we are giving us nelson right next in the second string copy we are just going to copy second string and we are just going to assign that string to string one right now second string is mandela okay and in a third string copy we are just going to assign temporary variable to string two you can see temp variable is nelson right now string one is mandela and string two is nelson your strings are swapped you can see here Nelson Mandela is the input I am giving after swapping Mandela and Nelson. So here Mandela is the first string and Nelson is the second string. The strings are swapped, right? So this is your swapping of strings program. Last program is right, Armstrong number or not. We are just getting a number. Here I am giving the number as 153, right? After giving the number, I am just assigning that to temporary variable. Let me quickly explain how it executes. Okay. So now I am just assigning n to temporary variable. What is the n value? Temp is equal to 153. Right. Again, I am checking 153 is greater than 0. Yes, it is true. Then it will go for execution. It will calculate r value. r is equal to n modulo 10. Right. What is the n? 153 modulo 10. Modulo in the sense it will return only reminder. So r is right then sum is equal to sum initially your sum value is 0 right now it will calculate 0 plus reminder we are having 3 star 3 star 3 so sum value will become 27 now it will calculate n value n is equal to 153 divided by 10 is equal to 15 you know quotient will be written right now we are having r value is equal to 3, sum value is equal to 27 and n value is equal to 15. Right? Then it will again go for execution. It will check n is greater than 0. 15 is greater than 0. We are having the value 15 here. right? So it will check with the 0. If it is greater than 0, it will go for execution. r is equal to 153. That is, we are having n value, right? 15 modulo 10. Here reminder is 5. On 10 are 10, reminder is 5. Then sum value is equal to sum plus r star r star r. The meaning of that is sum previous sum is 27 plus 5 star 5 star 5 is 5 cube. You are having 125. Now the answer is 152. Right? After summing up, you will have 152. Just now we, are, we can calculate n by 10. That is 15 by 10. Right, so here you it will return the quotient, so you will have one. Okay, now it will go for checking the condition and one is greater than zero. One is greater than zero, definitely. Right, so it will calculate r is equal to r is equal to one modulo 10. You know, in a one modulo 10, reminder will be one, same. So sum is equal to sum, previous sum is 152 plus r value is one. Now you will have 153. Right? Next, n is equal to n by 10. It is 1 by 10. It is 0. Point something. Right? 0. Point something. So it will go and execute. Right? So afterwards, it will check whether temporary variable is equal to z equal to sum. So here we are having temp assigned as 153. It will check 153 is equal to is equal to sum. 